नमस्ते हाय एंड वेलकम दिस इज आवर सेकेंड लास्ट इन द सीरीज ऑफ डॉक्टर्स फॉर गुड हेल्थ एंड टुडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ टॉपिक विच इज एक्सट्रीमली क्लोज टू ऑल आवर हार्ट्स एंड हैज गॉटन रियली क्लोज दिस टाइम टू आवर हार्ट्स थैंक्स टू द लॉकडाउन थैंक्स टू हैश टैग डब्ल्यू एफ एच एंड थैंक्स टू ऑल ऑफ द वर्क दैट वी आर नाउ डूइंग फ्रॉम होम एंड द एंडलेस स्क्रीन यूज today with me i have dr mukta ranade who is an ophthalmologist and who specializes in all things related to your eyes especially if you have diabetes so uh she's going to get online with us she's going to talk to us about what can we do about the power in our eyes should we be wearing our glasses how should we care about our eyes is there any special food that we need to eat should we exercise and if we have diabetes what kind of care should we take for our eyes so doc i can see you live uh, on the screen and i'm going to be sending you an invite when you see it on your screen just click accept All right so I have sent that request to you and I'm going to be talking to you shortly. Oh yes uh you know I read that dark circles glaucoma hmm uh, children and eye health I'm going to be asking her all of these things oh hi how are you Oh I'm fine. I'm so excited to be with you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. I do know that you've been in in surgeries and procedures and eye exam all day and thank you very much for taking the afternoon out to talk to us. So how are you thank feeling you for having us? Sorry. <laughs> I'm saying how are you feeling being on live? Oh it's wonderful the outreach that you have is so amazing here am i telling one or two people most of whom won't listen to me in any case and here am i online with you with all your followers so i'm really hoping to do a great lot of good today yes yes i hope so too so i think i'm going to uh, go dive straight into questions and the first question that i have for you doc is uh, you know we've all been at homes we've worked from homes we have people who have been on their screens at least 12 to 15 hours a day and this is probably going to go on well into june 2021 most of us are feeling a strain on on our eyes like never before you know so uh what do you have to say about this because the the screens are not going to go anywhere so what can we do for eye strain during this time so you you're very right ruchita there is a there has been a lot of increase in our screen activity since the past 8 to 10 months that's a no brainer and uh, there is the other part of it that you know when people leave office they close their laptops and they go home and presumably they do a lot of other activities whereas here they just assumed to be in office until whatever 3 o'clock at night i had a horrendous story the other day somebody saying i started at 3 a.m in the morning and was continuing until 1 a.m at night those are really long hours you know that's absolutely killing for the eye so understand that lifestyle problems cannot be corrected by medicine surgery and what have you that has to be corrected by living well okay so you're going to have to get your sleep it's the same thing that i think i've been trying to watch every one of your doctors speak you know either recorded or live and every one of us has been saying the same thing sleep get your exercise eat right eat well eat on time and uh, that's how you will prevent all this from happening you know so one of the misconceptions i would like to clear is where people say we shouldn't step outdoors so covid pandemic first few days of lockdown aside nobody is preventing you from going outdoors do go out do exercise it's good for the eyes now why am i saying that it's good for all of you the whole of you you know what i've uh, 
told you this before also that the eyes are just part of your body and whatever is good for your entire body is going to be good for your eyes but specifically for the eyes the eyes tend to focus on near objects on on your table on your chair on your wall so no matter how big your house you're not going to get a kind of infinity relaxed uh, space within indoors so you're going to have to go outdoors for that so do go outdoors certainly wear your mask but actually out of doors is the safest place because of the sheer air dilution there's so much air outside that for your one covid virus to come and attack your little nose is you know highly unlikely outdoors and much more likely in closed spaces much more likely in an ac space so keep your windows open stare out of your window at the distance take a break from your screen the important thing is anything that you do for the longest amount of time begins to get boring repetitive and it's definitely damaging you got to change you know if you're sitting stand up if you're sleeping sit down if you're on your screen take a break look out of your window okay do you uh, have any um, you know any more specific suggestion for that like how often should i take a break from my screen so Every there is person. there used to be uh, i don't think anyone in the younger generation is ever going to follow this but there used to be what we call the 20 20 20 rule okay so if you've been on the screen for 20 minutes take a 20 second break and look at 20 meters away so you know look wow. out of your window and look at trees in the distance or a lamp post if you don't have trees that's unfortunate <laughs> but if you don't have trees look at the lamp post but look 20 meters away don't look at your screen which is you know far closer within a meter of you so uh, definitely try and do that that's the 20 20 20 rule which sounds horrendous because these guys are just glued to their screen 3 hours at a time and they say what is this every 20 minutes so i used to tell my patients put your screen on a blink you know you can set these things on your screen right so get your technology to work for you put it on a blink every 20 minutes and just for 20 seconds and then when that happens turn to your window look out look at the trees it's it's a relief for all parts of your body you no, stand is... up so like you're always telling us sitting is the new smoking so stand up look out of your window stretch your muscles stretch your neck muscles and then get back to work Well, this is really nice this is very useful this is easy to remember 20 20 20 i think it will stay with all of us now yes. you know uh, now that we've heard it from you what about children though you know even children are online schools are online and uh, we have a lot of parents writing to us saying mere bachche ka number aa gaya is saal mein ya bad gaya what can i do so what would what what would you specifically like to say to kids Do they need so to do anything? So specifically, uh, I know this online school thing and all has become very necessary now. So I really, uh, it's it's kind of shut my trap a bit because normally I tell people, don't get your children onto screens until they're at least nine or ten years old, which is impossible. I grant you now, but uh, this this is. you know that's the trend that you should be thinking along then you would restrict it quite a bit more than you're already restricting it so this is something that i have even put up a video online i went to one of these playgrounds where you have this wonderful jungle gym outdoors you know and i keep telling people like where are your children why are they on this you know why are they at home playing a game on your mobile screen so for an eye to develop normally and well children need to be outdoors again the same principle when your eye is totally relaxed is when it's developing normally a lot of myopia is created by you know children being it used to be created because of reading you know a lot of uh, like that used to be the near activity but ultimately even reading was pretty much restricted nobody could really read hours on end all day long as children are on their screens nowadays but now screen is the added um, disadvantage of having your light go entirely into your eyes so this is something that we used to be told when we were kids i don't know if you heard it i guess you also must have that the light should fall on your book or on your reading material right but what happens with screens a simple thing for people to understand is that this light goes directly into your eye and because it goes directly into your eye uh, it causes causes your retinal cells to work harder causes them to tire out faster so in general degenerations and all will happen 
uh, far more in this generation than probably it happened in ours. Okay, okay. You see that, and you would attribute it to uh, the screen use, is what you're yes, saying. Yes, yes. A lot of things. See, generationally, a lot of things change. In fact, I just read somebody yesterday, one of my favorite authors. In fact, Bill Bryson, who says the worst thing for health was agriculture. So you know, every step that civilization takes, it goes, you know, a little bit against what we used to be. Remember, and actually, I don't think this is something that people realize. Our body was designed for about two, three, four millennials ago, when we used to just walk around in the jungle, forage all kinds of different food stuff, and uh, when we started concentrating and growing only one thing and settling down, is when all the degeneration started. We got shorter in height. We started getting, you know, teeth degeneration, eye degeneration, just massa bagya because we settled down. So every single step into civilization is taking us away from the way our body was designed to be. All right, you know, uh, now that you said just ma bagya, a lot of people uh, have questions. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Agar chasma aagya, so then should you be wearing it at all, or should you be quickly removing it when other people are looking at you? <laughs> you know. So what's what's the whole deal with a chasma? Uh, is there any specific age at which I should compulsorily go get an eye exam? Um, and if I, you know, if I do get a chasma, should I wear it? So if you do get a chasma, please do wear it. Okay. It's an I, I thought of a wonderful joke. I'm going to crack it. I think both your clients <laughs> and my patients invest emotions in a number. Now, a number is not emotionless. Ah, it doesn't mean yes. anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're 64 kgs, but I want to be 59.5, is just the same as me. Na, so last time, sawa tien tha, abhi saare tien number kaise ho gaya? Correct. An emotionless figure. Numbers do not mean anything. What means mm -hmm. the world is your function. How are you? Like you say, how are you moving? How are you carrying yourself? In the same way, like I say, how are you seeing? If you're seeing well, then you may have a minus seven number or a plus seven number. I don't care. It's an emotionless thing. You wear it. It's like fill it, shut it, forget it. In the same way, you get glasses. You wear them. You're seeing well. That's it. Forget about them. Okay. So this is something that we're always seeing. How you see. Is far more important than how you look. You're off from the mirror. You can't see how you look, but what you're seeing is what is going to take you through life. And today, lifespans are increasing. You want to go to your 90s? Sure, you do. But you want to go there with everything working. You know, so you want your eyes to work. You want your ears to work. So when kids get glasses, please, for God's sake, make them wear them. Uh, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. Thirty to fifty percent, nobody ever knows for sure, of your visual cortex, of your cortical fibers, that is the surface of the brain that's processing your information. Thirty to fifty percent of those fibers are visual fibers. Okay, wow. your optic nerve carries roughly about one million to one point five million fibers. Your auditory nerve, roughly about thirty thousand. I think there's no audio book. Are you able to hear me? Check on your mute. Did you press mute? Try talking again. All right. While we have the doc come back, I'm just going to repeat what she said that the optic nerve has many more fibers as compared to the uh, one that comes from our ears. It's it's something that I had no idea about. This is wonderful information, and I do hope that she's able to have her internet back so that we can hear. All of the stuff that she has to share with us, because I think what she's sharing is 
is really revolutionary in terms of the information that we've had. I think we have your back dog, but not your voice. Maybe you should log back in. Should we do that? Okay. Uh, the dog, if you can kind of get out of this live and I'll send you an invite again and maybe you accept that one more time. Yes, 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 do that. You leave and I'll invite again. We are hearing each other with our eyes right now. That's another interesting thing that's happening on this slide. Okay. So she's gone, but I'm going to call her back. Tell her. Okay. And the request has been sent. I do hope that you're all able to hear me. Yes. Good. And we have her back. I'm sorry. The dreaded tech problem. I spent <laughs> la the last four days thinking, I will join. I will not join. And that's it. Your worst fears yeah. always come true. Your worst fears always come true. Which is why when you go for an eye exam, you should go with an open mind, you know, because if you're yes. expecting the worst, the worst is <laughs> All right. So tell us, you were telling us about I'm your sorry. Fitness. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> like I was saying that when you're learning, you know, when your brain is learning anything, within the same span of time, say you give you 10 minutes, you can learn 80% faster with your visual information than with any of the other four senses. So that's how important your eye is. Therefore, that's how much strain the brain takes. Even if you get a grain of sand in your eye or a little particle, you see you get a headache, you get conjunctivitis, you get a headache. Why? Because the brain is paying that much importance to your sense and it's got so many fibers just trying to make the eye work well so if your eye is not focusing well your all your energy and the brain uses a hell of a lot of energy even more than muscles you know it uses a lot of energy so mm -hmm. your brain is going to spend a lot of energy just trying to get that information trying to get it in a good uh, way you know say you have an, a number only in one eye okay and you don't have it in the other eye. Now the person walks around thinking, Miracle to Acha Dikra, because that other eye is functional, right? That's another thing. 90% of the work can be done with one eye alone, but you lose out on the quality of information. Depth perception and the way objects look in 3D is a construct of our brain, not of our eyes. And it requires two eyes to give you that information. Therefore, if your one eye is hobbled and you feel like, why should I wear my chasma? Only one eye needs it, the other eye is seeing well. But no, you're losing out on things and then you get what is called a lazy eye. So it's like an old camera or, you know, one of your old phones whose camera has got spoiled and you just put it aside and not bother about it anymore. That's what happens when one eye has a number. So whether you have a number in one eye, two eyes at whatever age, but especially for children. Why we're saying that is developmentally, if you're hobbled, if you have, you know, not developed properly, you cannot correct it once you're an adult. And here oh. we mean the uh, adult as in 12 years old. So children's oh. eyes should be corrected as soon as they develop a problem. The earlier, you know, you uh, uh, correct that, the better they have, you know, the less sensory deprivation and therefore less uh, problems in developing. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. And, uh, you know, that really makes a lot of sense. So what about adults? You know, at, uh, what about the reading glasses that one gets? Because uh, I've seen a whole lot of people saying, yeah, reading glasses, but I'm just phone pe just font bada kar dete hu, so I'm able to read. So, uh, you know, uh, this whole adult uh, vision or vision deficiency or whatever that it is called, is there any age at which I should compulsorily go and get an eye exam? And if I must get an eye exam, where should I get it from? From my local uh, chasma guy or should I actually book an appointment with an ophthalmologist? Okay, so here, uh, I just want to mention about the kids also. One thing I forgot was the age, like at the age of roughly about 7, 9, 11 and 12 is when you should be 
you know, giving your children the eye checkup just to check that their eyes are developing without a number. Sometimes schools do this, which would be a very good initiative, but you can't depend on that. So ideally, you go and go to your ophthalmologist and get your child's eyes checked out. Okay. <laughs> if, say, you've reached the age of, say, uh, 18, 20 without a number, mostly for the next 20 years, mostly, I say, because nowadays, because of digitization, some amount of eye strain and a small number might come even in the interim period. But the main age then would be 40. So mm -hmm. roughly around 38, 39, 40, that's when you should go and get your eye checked up. And uh, ideally, you should wear progressive glasses because, you know, people get these reading glasses and then they do this, this, this all the time. Now, the way the eye moves, the eyes have about 15 to 20 what we call saccades in a second, which means they're just going on and moving all the time. Every time you look into the distance with the eyes, with the reading number, you're using the wrong number to look at the distance, right? So that will cause you problems. That's why progressive glasses is a great invention and you have to get adjusted to that, adapted to that. Now, what do I mean by that? So let me start by saying the eyes don't see actually. The eye is just a camera on which something is printed. It's just like saying your film can see. You know, the photograph mm. is printed on a film. Does the film see? No. So just the way, that way, your retina doesn't see. The image gets printed on it. Then it gets transferred to the brain and the brain constructs an image. Okay. And to prove that to you, I can prove that to you. All of you can see it right now. Say you close one eye and you put a finger in front of the other eye. Keep looking straight and move the finger sideways. Don't move your eye. Keep your eyes straight and move the finger sideways. At one point, you will find the finger disappearing. That is where your optic nerve is because there are no retinal nerve cells on the optic uh, nerve. Okay? And because there are no... So it's like this. Your optic nerve is entering the eye. Here there are no retinal cells. So this is what is called a blind spot in each of your eyes. Then how do you not go around seeing two big holes in the world? That's because your brain constructs and, you know, kind of makes the world in that part. It's actually, you know, like a fantasy. It's actually uh, making that uh, thing. And in fact, there are syndromes where somebody is injured and they actually start hallucinating or seeing things in that part of their visual field, which is actually absent. So wow. the, the, that, that's the thing to remember, that it's your brain that's seeing things and adaptation to anything in the world takes place in the brains. So therefore, you are going to have to just tell yourself and be patient and your brain will adapt to it. Indian women are very easy to explain this to. I tell them like, look, when you first wore your sari, could you walk two steps? No, you couldn't. I'm sure you couldn't. And yet we are all of us seeing these wonderful women who run and catch trains, right? In saris. You see, you see them and you're like, wow, you know, that I, I recently saw one of these uh, girls go viral on Instagram yeah, yeah, yeah. doing some boom thing with the sari on. Correct, so you can do correct. anything, right? The human being can do anything. This is just getting adapted to a pair of glasses. Come on, it's not such a big deal. Don't make a big deal of it. <laughs> well, everyone says, but then the glasses are very expensive. You know, 30, 35,000 for a pair. I mean, do you think it's worth the investment? Because I uh, remember you once saying that, uh, you know, the, the brain can adapt to everything, even to like a blurred uh, vision. Yes. And then once it adapts, yes. it blurred, no longer looks like the blurred vision yes. at all. You know? so, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. We get adapted to being as low functional as you please, you know. You could be very low functional and you'd be still uh, going around thinking, oh, I can see everything until someone points to that and this. you say, what is it? There's nothing there. I can't see Rujuta. Is there a Rujuta here? So it's like that. You, know? <laughs> you get used to being low functional, but do you want to be? You, know, correct, you, have, you have this lifetime and no matter how much Vedanta promises it, you can't possibly know whether you're going to have another lifetime to correct the mistakes of this. So enjoy this. No? Enjoy this, yes. the world. And the only way you enjoy it is when you see everything crystal clear and sharp. That's when yeah. you enjoy the world.
so it's it's worth spending the money on classes it is definitely admission is priceless i keep telling people your eyes are priceless rather everything is we hear it about the heart we heard it about the liver the teeth the eyes so basically every single part of your body so when something is wrong you will come and say oh aap ko kuch nahi hona chahiye are but ha but kisi cheez ko kuch nahi hona chahiye correct correct that brings me uh, you know to uh, one of the areas that you specialize in you know diabetes and eye care is there any protocol that one needs to follow if one has diabetes first of all as a diabetic patient are my eyes actually at a risk and are my eyes actually at a risk if my blood sugar is well regulated you know my mere ko blood sugar is well regulated with medicine should i still bother uh, or are my eyes still at a risk Yes, yes. So, so definitely, diabetes does affect the eyes a whole lot. It affects every organ, of course. In the end, there is end organ damage, but the two organs that get fastest affected are kidney and the eye. And in the eye, uh, the amazing thing about the eyes, Richard, you must have heard this poetic thing that eyes are the windows to the soul. You know, you can see the love reflected into the eyes and all. The amazing <laughs> thing is. eyes are windows into the body the pupil is is a diaphragm is a curtain that can be dilated you know you hate that <laughs> but when they when i dilate your pupils i can look into your body when it's live kicking your awake conscious and i can still look into your body and see every blood vessel on your retina and when i do that i can see what it is doing is it leaking which is what happens in diabetes is it pumping nicely you can see your veins pulsating in your eye and when you can look into a live organ in its perfectly functional shape and size then you know exactly what's going on so a lot of diseases can be diagnosed simply by going through the dilatation test at the ophthalmologist's office which is why you must go now we come to your original question to an ophthalmologist and not an optician they are frankly not that educated as far as the eyes are concerned they after 10th or 12th standard they just you know uh, train sometimes to do the number they might do a good job at that but they have no knowledge of the diseases of the eye whereas when you go to an ophthalmologist office he will dilate you and see the retina of your eye see your eye pressure a lot mm. of times things like what is going to happen next to a diabetic can be predicted by looking inside the eye so wow. cataract retinal problems they do happen in diabetics and other problems like glaucoma wagera they are associated with diabetes what we oh. mean by that is whatever is the metabolic abnormalities that cause any of our metabolic syndromes they are reflected in a multitude of ways in the body you know so we keep saying fitness fitness and all all of us have now begun to understand that there's a muscular skeletal element to the fitness no doubt but real fitness is having your blood coursing to every part of your body very well okay mm -hmm. and of course we know the way to do that is to eat well to exercise well to sleep well but this this rukawat jo hoti hai in your blood in your uh, blood flow this is what causes end organ damage so all the damage is caused by that and moving you know activity of any sort really helps you to that so even if you do have diabetes one thing as you say of course your blood sugar should be controlled well any which way that you can do it so in various ways what don't say ke, okay i'm taking my tablet that's not it you need to move you need to see that you're eating well you're eating at good timings you need to see that you're sleeping well and you need to be moving so something that puzzles people is you know where did my mother go to the gym but she was fine and healthy but understand what her life was she had a more peaceful life in terms of she was not uh, you know needed she didn't need to prove herself in the outer outer world she was happy with home and family and all that she cooked for herself almost 99% of the meals that your mother ate were probably what she cooked for herself and she moved all day she used the big stone grinders and uh, you know ground spices every day with her own hands and everything was you know uh, sit down and uh, like sort of more talking. active so, yeah. so much active 
activity so much activity gym to kuch bhi nahi hai that much activity so that is why you know the absence of instant calories the presence of a lot of mechanical work to do eliminated their lifestyle was different you understand that ours is different and therefore you have to do follow specific rules of exercise physiology or food physiology and that helps you to maintain your fitness right and, and that helps uh, you to maintain your eyes as well glaucoma is known to uh, you know respond better in exercisers which means oh. not not you know little weights on your eyelashes that you take up and down but normal exercise your uh, resistance training your yoga your even if nothing else works for you even a walk just get moving the okay. best thing is the thing that gets done yeah true true we have there are questions about uh, laser or lasix you know uh, should one consider doing that and uh, are there any long term side effects uh, you know what are your views on uh, that should should one bother getting a, a laser treatment done for the eyes yes so so the fact here is that i have a lot of personal by it's personal not as a professional against this then i tell you why it is okay so i personally assess surgery as something that you are going to use the risk benefit ratio for okay so what is the risk of uh, not doing a cataract surgery you will eventually start seeing less and less in the eye and then your function becomes lower and lower so why would you wait until you go blind and then do it because you're living for that many years with a low function therefore the risk of not doing a cataract surgery is eventual 100% blindness and living with low function and if what is the risk of doing the surgery some complications can happen and you may have a problem with your eyesight anyway the risk of surgery is about say 1 to 5% depending on which study you take risk of not doing the surgery for cataract is 100% you are eventually going to go down that path anyway okay so whenever you feel your function is lowered we would advise you as a doctor go and do the surgery now take spectacles what is the risk of wearing spectacles for the rest of your life no risk right <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no risk at all. Benefit, he benefit here. The one I always say is the one treatment with no side effects, right? Yeah. But yeah. but but people do think they have side effects, and that is always cosmetic. Again, mm -hmm. like I say, how you look versus how you see. All right. Mm -hmm. Whereas doing the surgery, as in any surgery in the world, it's a very good surgery. It's it's uh it's great in the correct hands with the correct machine. but as in any surgery there are always chances of complications happening so if i am a person who works primarily like me i'm i'm a surgeon i work primarily with my eyes and my hands why would i risk that even 1% i Absolutely. wouldn't right so i wouldn't do it because this is what i work with so i don't want to take a risk on that when i know that the alternative spectacles is no risk at all okay so that remember is a personal choice for the patient to make ki nahi baba i cannot live with glasses only i will take the risk to go ahead okay because the surgery itself is not so bad the important thing is what is the philosophy behind the surgery everything has a philosophy you need to think and when you when you go in for any cosmetic surgery you need to think what is my philosophy is this so necessary for me and then you take the risk then it's your risk to take whereas any functional problem it's the doctor's risk to take ke nahi you if you don't do it this will be the problem and this problem is whatever 80% 90% 100% so you have to take it out and then that that's the doctor's decision to make whereas lasik surgery is the patient's decision to make but when you're very very certain that this is what is what you really want okay and uh, again you should do it when the ch children are completely grown that is in girls roughly around 22 to 23 boys usually a little later 24 and uh, they sh their number shouldn't have changed for a year or two But then you know it's stable and you're not going to have to go in and do rep repeated surgeries because the number changed again okay Correct. so these Correct. are the things that in, and it's completely your decision to make so i'm telling you just personally just for myself not a professional opinion uh, that 
I wouldn't do it for myself because for me, I said it is very important, and I wouldn't risk it for something that has no risk if I don't do it. You know. Right. Right. I right. I touch my body surgically only if there is a risk of something happening to it if I don't do the surgery. Perfect. We are very nicely explained. Thank you so much. That was brilliant uh, insight. Now there are a lot of questions about dry eyes. People seem to be having. dry eyes uh, at least they seem to be noticing their dry eyes a lot uh, during this whole pandemic time what are your tips for that yes this is this is very important because they've been indoors a lot of times with the ac on ac is mm. extremely drying and dehumidifying then they've been on screens as we've already talked about so you get what we call evaporative drying out of the eyes that is the i just the tear film does just tends to uh, this thing so the reason is because dry up dry spots are created on your tear film and this is because you're not blinking enough okay if i when you look at a screen you you know you're looking and you don't want to miss a single moment of looking at rujuta so you're like <laughs> uh, like that and you're not blinking at all because <laughs> you're not blinking your tear film doesn't get spread okay so your tear film is not a a strong layer that just stays there it needs you to blink often to do it to spread that tear film and when it's not getting spread that's what what happens then is that you get a dry eye so the 20 20 20 rule we talked about that's another benefit of that you know when you're looking into the distance not focusing on anything in particular you'll blink more and uh, the funny part not so funny actually for the people who suffer from dry eyes is that your blink rate will go down to 100th of normal uh, sometimes when you are you know staring at a screen and even oh. if you're talking to someone it will go uh, down to about you know 110th or 120th of normal so that's yeah. that's a really big deal for the eye so one thing is like i said take frequent breaks from the screen there are of course eye drops that help which are called tear substitutes they're not actually medicines medicinal there's uh, so much as a replacement therapy okay so some parts of your tear film don't function perfectly well there are three layers you know the tear film is very very complex it's got fat it's got mucus chikat padartha and then it's got water with electrolytes wow Yes, I know. It is not just water, na. Pani ni bahar hai ham log. We are actually making something very great and complex to protect the cornea. That's the front glass, watch glass-like portion of the eye, because it's the only part of the body that doesn't have a blood supply. And the reason it doesn't have a blood supply is that if there were blood vessels all over the cornea, it wouldn't be crystal clear and glass-like, right? Oh, so mm. it needs. oxygen also from the air one of the parts of our body that directly tries to access oxygen from the air wow that that's a wondrous mm. organ actually if you yeah. actually break it down wow that's really interesting that's great on the other hand some people are having really watery eyes you know the watering that, all the time that's just an advanced version of your dry eye you have an irritation oh. you blink and then what does the eye do it it possibly has a problem uh say There's lots and lots of watery layer okay that's oh. comparatively easy to produce the glands that produce the lipid layer the meibomian glands they sometimes have problems so we call it mgd or meibomian gland disease or dry eye so what the mm-hmm. eyes is and then whenever anything starts going wrong in the body rujuta one of the things that happens is we get prone to infections okay so whenever you have dry eyes then you might get prone to more infections happening to you regularly and then you have more and more watering of the eye and you know watery looking eyes so everything needs to be attended to by a physician you know one nice thing is every normal person has one thing similar that everything is working so there are millions <laughs> and millions of processes and chemicals and what have you that have to work to just get one normal person to move around like theek hai doctor ki zarurat nahi hai but Correct. normal people are different in a million different ways because 
you have to figure out exactly which process went wrong the grandfather cause as we say you know theek hai abhi infection hai par kyu hua correct is of 100 people who get exposed to uh, covid everyone doesn't get it why correct. because there are processes that are fighting things all the time hmm just the other day i read that gym uh, equipment sometimes harbors more bacteria than the toilet seat but we don't correct. call it right we go we work out we come back and we're hale and hearty the reason is because there are processes meant to fight everything that's amazing that's great that's great i want to come back to diabetes a little bit uh, you know and just like the way you told us about the 2020 20 protocol is there any specific protocol that a diabetic uh, should follow you know get an eye exam okay. every year or you know uh, yes. what what yes. special care do i need to yes, take yes yes as a diabetic specifically we have an eye examination protocol that works that you get an eye examination the first time you know you discover that you're pre diabetic or you're diabetic you get an eye examination and then you get one every year from that time on until someone discovers there is some problem with your retina or you developed a cataract or something where especially if someone discovers some problem with your retina what is commonly known as diabetic retinopathy mm. then you need to see an eye surgeon every 6 months and once you have been treated there are several treatments one is an intra ocular injection an intra vitreal injection or there is sometimes laser treatment no matter what if you have needed treatment for your diabetic retinopathy at any point then the ideal interval is about every 3 months okay so a diabetic should make sure to follow up with the, his ophthalmologist every year without fail and obviously if he needs something if he begins to need treatment he will be told but even if he's not it's 6 months if some problem has started appearing and every 3 months once you need a treatment all right great thank you uh, you know before we let you go i have two more questions for you is that all right you have time absolutely oh my god okay, this is great. like thrilling to get up on the band box and tell all your favorite magazines to everyone <laughs> <laughs> okay cool cool uh you know there's one more question saying that when my husband is driving or when i'm driving all of a sudden i'll start seeing like floaters or like bubbles um uh, wherever you know on the road so does that indicate something does it need attention or uh, you know does it have a name what should i do about that when your husband is driving then your plane scared that's all <laughs> well, actually if you're seeing floaters uh, you know if you're seeing floaters there's a peculiar thing with floaters okay if you're seeing them when i'm just going to take my glasses off so you can see my eyes if i'm looking at you and i'm seeing floaters all over your face or all over the screen then you need to go and see someone immediately because that could be an emergency with the retina it could be some bleeding inside your eye if you're seeing it like this when i'm looking at you okay but most people 90% of floaters they tell you ha huh, you know if i look there now you see i have to defocus otherwise i can't see the floaters uh oh uh, yeah i can see them there right <laughs> yes yes so when you have yeah. to be focused when you have to take your mind off the focus and then see it then it doesn't really matter because those kind of floaters are almost every if you look at a bright sky you know and you're just looking at it you can sometimes see little pieces of white that's really like uh, you they appear like lights that are twinkling on and off or shooting stars that's your white blood cells traveling through your uh, blood vessels that you can sometimes see but more importantly in your vitreous vitreous is a gel okay it's a jelly that's filling the inside of your eye this is the inside of your eye so this entire big cavity is filled with gel wow. and as you age this jelly is going to uh, you know turn watery so it's like whatever was in your umbilical cord uh, when you were born that similar kind of jelly is filled into the eyes and then it's wow. lasted under 50 55 60 years and it starts getting liquefied a bit and then the pieces of gel that are floating through the liquid that appears like little flies or worms or sometimes it's attached to your optic nerve in a form of a ring 
that ring gets detached and you see it actually as a ring that's floating in front of your eyes but remember this floater which is a normal normal floater which you don't have to touch is something that you see when you're not focusing mm -hmm. so you're reading something you're not going to see it on top of that book you're looking at someone you're not going to see it on their face you're going to see it when you defocus so though you should see someone if you suddenly start seeing floaters the kind that you see when you're defocused are not dangerous if if you see them when you're focusing on the object of your vision you have to see someone right away that could All be right. something dangerous that's that's really uh, nice you know i mean this is information that i think most of us never really uh, had and have you always wondered what floaters are but this is very specific and this is extremely useful i think it can prevent uh, you know emergencies yeah. or loss of vision in the long run uh what about cataract there are questions saying can i prevent a cataract um you know is are there methods to prevent a cataract or will i compulsorily have a cataract if i live long enough so cataracts yes long enough possibly yes so cataracts are again your uh, lens you know the lens of the eye is made of protein again again like egg albumin it's it's here right behind your cornea and this uh, just like <laughs> i'm going to get gruesome now just like you put an egg on the tawa and the uh, you know transparent uh, albumin becomes white that's exactly ah. what happens when life fries you up <laughs> so when you you know in out in the sun or you're not eating well sometimes right in the womb if your mother hasn't eaten well that protein can be denatured so yes even children very rarely can have cataracts all right so cataracts eventually possibly occur because like i'm fond of telling my patients your body is eventually going to regenerate and you're eventually going to die it might happen at 120 years old you know you might be a biological outlier and really exercise and be active and eat well and then you live till 120 10 10000 saal ke to nahi hone wale ho hai na so everything has to degenerate eventually if you live long enough you, uh, it depends on what organ is going to go first you know and most doctors are always hoping ki heart pehle jaye to acha you don't want to live <laughs> to live on with a heart that's pumping merrily and everything else that's gone right but mm. cataracts can happen if you live long enough prevention to a certain amount again the same thing that we're saying you know eat well sleep well uh, it's getting boring almost how consistent we are so consistency in your lifestyle is the key but with cataracts specifically if you wear a good pair of sunglasses then the effect of the sun the tropical sun does cause uh, a far more Uh, you know tendency towards uh, frying your uh, lens and making a cataract so definitely protect yourself from the sun and that doesn't only mean goggles really in, in india you remember we have the turban we have the padar we have all sorts of things now that's gone we're wearing jeans but we're not wearing caps we're not wearing hats temperate climates they always cover their head but mm. here in india we have the blazing hot sun and we're merrily walking bareheaded so that's what we're always saying you know carry your umbrella carry your oh, uh, sunglasses wear a hat wear a cap very good habit yeah good good i didn't know that you know that is also that is something a, which can help prevent yeah. uh, the brother in law of mine who's a doctor who's always yelling at his wife and his daughters and everyone wear a cap wear a goggles wear your cap wear your goggles <laughs> you know, the tropical sun is is really something to be bothered about you know <laughs> Good, Both good, skin, good. Your eyes, everything that's exposed to it is damaged by it. Well, I think you've really given us wonderful uh, information about everything and much, much more. I think we've learned a lot about the eye today. Before uh, I let you go, I had one special question for you, but there is one more question which I'm I have to ask is because a lot of people have this question. um is there any specific food or yoga or any kind of a program that you would recommend to reverse eye power is eye power reversible mm not as far as i know <laughs> i've been 30 years in it and like mera number kam karna tell me tell me if you will what is the my the number of my glasses you can't right so mera 3.5 se 3.5 ho ke kya farak padne wala hai kuch nahi 
so there is really anything like that but i have seen and this is very incidental okay doctor shouldn't believe incidental information they should always go by evidence based information and nobody no medical person is bothered about chashma reverse karo you know yeah, we yeah, know that yeah. it's it's not worth bothering about therefore there are no evidence based studies on this but i've seen people who do inversions shirsasan something that i think even you believe in a lot these guys, there are a few guys that i know who not got their press biopsy the 40 40 se pe jo nazdeek ka number aata hai some of them have not got but again incidental information yeah, yeah. that doesn't translate into an evidence based paper <laughs> But doesn't harm to do shirsasan, does it? No, no, it doesn't. But uh, you know, if it if it comes as right. a recommendation for uh, reversing eye power, I think then it right. can become a little problematic. Yeah. <laughs> Something <laughs> will improve, if not your eye number. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Lastly, uh, you know, before I let you go, and while you're having your water. i want to ask you that uh, you know uh, and this is not really uh, just this is not related to the i per se but this is related to your profession um, and your gender interestingly uh, you know see uh, we've read statistics that uh, in in medical schools you have 51% girls 49% boys but uh, practicing women doctors seem to be as little as 17% and it could probably be a reflection of uh, you know uh, india overall currently in all of the brics countries we are amongst uh, the lowest women workforce uh, and we seem to see this even in uh, doctors which is otherwise you would think that you really studied hard you 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 know you went for that one seat you got it but now you're no longer practicing so what in your opinion needs to change maybe in medical schools or in the society or just in our heads as women so that uh, so that we can continue working because i've seen all the all the medical professionals at least in my immediate family working whether it was you or atya or durga atya and having very very meaningful careers so this this statistic really took me by surprise that there are 50% uh, you know girls in medical colleges but less than 17% or just about 17% uh, practicing doctors what's you know how did you make your uh, your career you know what challenges did you face how did you overcome them and was your gender uh, a limitation you know was it ever a limitation no i don't think so not my gender per se ever <laughs> i think you know i was one of those people who never never uh, had this fact in my head ke okay i'm a woman and i should behave in a certain way so that that possibly helps i think you know a lot has been already said about how society needs to support women and stuff like that so i'm going to just and not that it's not important it's very important i'm just going to keep it aside for a moment because there are a lot of people who are saying that so i'm kind of going to start from this fact that nobody helps you unless you want it and ask for it so mm. if you are going to work uh i'll tell you i have a wonderful family okay on both sides like both my husband's side as well as my own uh, family everyone's highly supportive and everyone was like even in my generation my mother said oh you can complete your masters and then we can think about the marriage was always on the agenda it was not very high on the agenda that was number one number two when i, I had my kid right in the middle of doing my masters actually so i got married self build <laughs> and had a kid and also again self build and uh, there was this talk about you know whether i should postpone my masters take a drop as they say for a year right i mm -hmm. was very sure that no 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 if i get involved with my kid that much i won't want to go back or i take many more attempts i'm much more sure that i can clear it in one go if i continue to do that so for the first 9 months my husband and my mother in law and my everyone the whole family and my sister and my brother in law everyone looked after my kid and uh, you know he he thrived much more mm. i think than he would have if i had not coddled him so he did really well and he is a happy social character even today 30 years on so that's really good so i think what we need to do is 
uh, why do we put our competitive aggressive side aside once we've got that coveted medical seat or that coveted master seat why are we not why don't we take that forward in life you know we need to be it's a modern society we we need to relegate all these things like you know the mother is the caregiver yes sure she is but so is everyone else and that's not just the father you know everybody the in laws your uh, your own and you know the grandmothers on both sides of the family and maybe uh, and plus in india we're so lucky think about it we have cooks we have maids we have we have every which person willing to help us you know and so many people needing those jobs right so spread the money all, al- along like you're making money give somebody else a big portion a of job it. yeah <laughs> yes and and they they do it willingly they do it happily they're nice about it and then you could as a doctor you have the loveliest job in the world because you know you can take your own uh, clinic hours you can decide my daughter changed her school timing three times during her school her entire school like 1 to 4 was something else and then 5 to 8 uh, was something else and 8 9 10 was some other timing and i changed my clinic timing every time what happens maybe you lose out on a couple of patients no problem why are we you know we don't want to collect each and every patient who wants to come to us if they are not willing to adjust to our timings okay fine there are many other doctors right and also there are many other patients those who value what you give them specifically and every doctor or every individual gives something else you know like i talk a lot i talk like this to almost every one of my patients so you can imagine that some people get bored of that i mean they just say kitna bolti hai chashma de do aur jaane do there are others who you know just the just yesterday in fact somebody said i need to give you a feedback nobody's given me this much time and attention so it's wow. like that you are giving something and a particular patient wants that so he will come back to you he may even go to three other doctors ke yaar ye to 8:30 baje raat ko 10 baje milti nahi hai i 8 o'clock i'm like goodbye ram ram i have to go home even if my kids are grown up i need time for myself i like to do 110 things so it's you keep your timing you are very you're very lucky in this profession ki you are not employed by a corporate and you are keeping to your own timings and you have to have some amount of you know initiative get a place for yourself run around get the municipal permission yeah sure it's difficult but what is not in life yeah. life is complex deal with the complexity so awesome that women should deal with the complexity yes people should help them but they will help only if you ask but if you say no i want to do my masters on time i want to have my clinic hours even if it's like only morning clinic there was a standing joke in my family that i used to practice 8 to 10 in the morning and 8 to 10 at night at one point in my life <laughs> you do whatever it takes but you don't lose your edge keep your edge awesome awesome that's really good and i'm sure that's going to help a lot of students out there who are thinking about how to go about uh, their practice to practice lastly does hair dye affect eyesight <laughs> i i i really don't think that's fair <laughs> so i'm a colorful character i love color and i have used color in all its different formats all my I- life and it has it no it it can cause allergies any chemical which is why in fact you know people ask me about this also i'm just going to get some non medical stuff in and the reason i stopped coloring my hair is i thought you know uh, we avoid chemicals in so many formats so why use this one you know why do this every whatever 15 20 you days and yeah but Uh, that doesn't apply to something anything that you do once in a while is not harmful remember the balance is here so if you're doing something consistently day in and day out and then once in a while you do something else that's fine so color can only affect you as a form of allergy in other ways it does not damage the eye so if you get an allergy and some people get a very severe allergy then yes then it can affect the eyes mildly the skin much more Mm. Good. Thank you very much. We've got an That was whole very lot. naughty of you. Huh? That last question. <laughs> <laughs> That's two very questions. 
<laughs> you know, this is this really wasn't my question. At least for the last thirty minutes, I haven't asked you any questions. That is just my own. You know, like I said, we had more than two hundred questions on eyes the minute we posted that story of yours. So I think this can go on endlessly. I really hope I help people. Oh, I think this was very very helpful. So thank you so much for spending this time with us, Doc. It's been thank you very much. Insightful. and really allowed us to learn a lot uh, you know the next time i think about a cat track i'm going to think about an egg breaking and you know on a sawa and turning into an egg you know that's nice and easy to remember so thank you so much for everything that you've shared you have have a good day and merry christmas and a happy new year to you yes. thank you merry yeah. christmas and a happy new year to you and all your listeners thank you very thank much for this opportunity Thank you I'm glad we could do this thank you bye bye